I built a custom designed rack mountable PCIe expansion solution that will let you get every last bit of efficiency out of all your computer's PCIe slots and lanes. It uses MCIO breakout boards, Oculink, or even riser cables to ensure maximum compatibility with any system, and it has its own independent power supply. Oh, and I even designed a 2U version for half height cards. Is it overkill? For most people, absolutely yes. But for me, this is actually something that I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. Let's talk about it. All right, let's take a step back and ask the question, why? Why is this something that I've wanted for a long time? Well, aside from just being cool, I did actually have problems that this solved. The most prevalent one that is actually a first world problem these days is that many affordable home lab systems are coming packed with like 128 lanes of PCIe. But wait, that doesn't really sound like a problem. Well, that in itself isn't. The problem is physically using all of those lanes. Let's take my main Epic based server that I've been running for a few years. That setup has 128 lanes and seven physical X16 PCIe slots to utilize them. And if you look at the board, you'll see that for a standard ATX board, that's pretty much the maximum amount of slots you can get. And you'll also notice that they don't have any vacant slots in between them. So here's the problem. What if I use PCIe cards that aren't single slot, like some GPUs? Using two dual slot GPUs would physically block off two other slots, rendering them useless and reducing the total lanes you get by 32. Yes, there is some switching that goes on one of the slots and using the Oculink ports, but you get it. Another issue that I've run into is that if I have an X8 physical card like a NIC or an HBA, that will take up an X16 slot, rendering the other half useless. But now we can bifurcate that out and turn a single X16 slot into two X8 slots with room for whatever you want. I hope you're starting to see how useful this thing is for some setups. Also, this isn't limited to high-end servers with over 100 PCIe lanes. In my latest workstation build, I specifically had to go with the only dual slot 5090 that exists since any other one would block off the other PCIe slot that I needed for my network card. So yes, the use cases are niche, but they are legitimate. The other situation you may run into is that your PCIe cards may not physically fit into your chassis at all. This is super common for 1U and 2U systems where oftentimes you're limited to single slot and half height cards. If you have a 2U system with tons of PCIe slots but want to use big beefy GPUs, well, you're out of luck. With this setup, you can add plenty of space for PCIe expansion and only take up 3U of rack space. So there's your why. Let's talk about the how. So when I started this project, there were two things that I wanted to ensure, that it could be 3D printed and that you could use parts that would be interchangeable. It did take me a few tries before I got the design mediocre enough to work and it's printed in three parts that go together with these grooves and some super glue. It supports an SFF power supply mainly because I actually started with a small 10 inch 2U version, so that was necessary over there and I guess it just stuck with the rest of the designs. But like most of this design, that can be changed. Then the rack gears and PCIe cards are held into place using M3 heat tap mounts. As for how the actual PCIe connection works, like the entire point of this project, I'm using these cool little MCIO PCIe expansion kits. So one end is a regular X16 mail port that goes into your motherboard and it has two uh, X8 MCIO slots to break that connection out into an X16 female card on the other end. And the cool thing about this is that you can bifurcate the slot to X8 and X8 and send each of the MCIO cables to separate female cards, effectively giving you two X8 slots from a single X16 port. And it only takes up a single slot on the motherboard. And if you want the full X16 beams, then you can send both cables to the same receiving board and boom, you have X16. The possibilities are not actually endless, but you still have options. The other way you can do PCIe expansion is through Oculink. Just like the other setup, you have a receiving board that uses standard Oculink 4i cables. And on the other end, we have this PCIe card that gives you an external Oculink port. The downside of this is that it's only four lanes, so you'd likely only do this on an X4 physical slot. And of course, if your board has Oculink built in, then you would just use that. 
The last option would be a PCI riser cable, and I wouldn't really recommend those since they usually suffer from terrible signal degradation, and they're just physically a pain to work with. But you do you. Like I said, this is designed to be able to use whatever option you want since the expansion cards just sit on these little plastic mounts and are held in by double-sided tape. This way you can just print out whatever height and size you need with very minimal design experience. And I mean, yeah, we also have our own power switch here on the front too. So you'll want to make sure that that's on before your server is powered on. And if everything is connected and configured correctly in the BIOS, you should just be good to go. I tested it with two GPUs and a 100 gig NIC along with another 100 gig NIC still connected to the motherboard and everything was just detected on the first try and worked. It's awesome. But surely this setup isn't perfect, right? Right. The first issue is cost. Not the cost of the design, this is just 3D printed, but the cost of the MCIO expansion sets. They actually used to be cheap, but due to a political reasons, they've gotten a bit more expensive. I think the kit that I'm using here costs around $200, which I mean, still isn't too bad if this is a solution that can save you some space, reduce wasting PCIe lanes, and prevent you from needing to build a whole nother system. The Oculink option though is much cheaper, but again, only gives you four lanes. Surely there are more options out there that I'm not considering, and if so, great. This design should work for all of those. The other thing that isn't really a negative, but I say this about all of my designs, and that's that it can be proved by a whole lot. While it is sturdy enough to hold some big beefy cards and it can be customized for different uses, the whole double-sided tape thing and lack of standard PCIe slot screws is definitely a little jank. Overall though, I love this thing. And another benefit that I didn't mention is that this can house cards from multiple systems. So if you have a cluster, then you can deploy this to hold all the cards from it. So assuming you have three 2U systems and this expansion unit, that's 9U. But if you deploy three 4U systems to accommodate the cards in each unit, that's 12U. Look at that, saving space. But yeah, I mean, I think that's everything. Again, I think this is a great solution for those that need it, but by no means am I suggesting that everybody needs this. Of course, the 3D designs and all the parts are listed down in the description, but what do you think? Let me know down in the comments, but that's all I have for this one. If you liked it, then drop a like and subscribe if you wanna see more goofy 3D printed home lab stuff. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my 3U PCIe expansion that's like way cooler than this and like more affordable, I think. You guys are the best. And if you're still watching, you're PCIe Gen 3. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.